On the latest episode of BCC The Other Side, we recap and review the 1993 alien abduction classic, Fire in the Sky. It's a must-listen-to coda to our Travis Walton two-parter exclusively on our Patreon. To listen, go to patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club. It's Bigfoot Collectors Club with Bryce and Michael. I know a ghost story or two. Let's do this. <laughs> Welcome, welcome to Bigfoot Collectors Club, the show where we talk to amazing guests about their personal paranormal history and share stories of high strangeness. I'm your host, Michael McMillan. <gasps> dun, dun, dun! Not with me today is regular host Bryce Johnson, nor super producer Riley Bray. They're both absent. Bryce is probably off looking for Bigfoot in the woods somewhere, and Riley... Well, last time I saw Riley, he was making the pilgrimage to the top of a mountain to commune with the cosmos using the power of sick riffs and electronic soundscapes. I wish them both well, as and they will return next week. Uh, that being said, hoo, 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 I'm in control now. Uh, wet, hot, alien, summer two, summer abduction rolls on, and I'm certainly not celebrating alone, because when the boys are away... The cats like to play. I know that's not really the expression, but we have an amazing guest filling in for Bryce. She's going to be the co-host for this week, and she does love cats. You know her from a funny feeling. And the new Patreon podcast, L is for Losers, of which I am a patron. Club Scouts of all timelines, please welcome back to the show our dear paranormal sister, Marcy Jaro. Oh, hi, Michael. (laughs) How are you? I'm doing well. Um, I'm sad that our other buddies aren't around. I know. But honestly, more talking for me, and I love it. (laughs) Well, you know, you have how many? Seven podcasts now? You have one every day of the week, right? So you know how to do this. I do feel like my schedule is taken up by a lot of podcasting, and I love it, so I have no complaints. Well, you're also very good at it, and I'm already a big fan of your brand new one, Ella's for Losers. <gasps> Thank you so much for being a patron. Oh. Uh, it has been such a fun launch. We just launched last week, so I don't know when this is coming out. I assume soon. So, when they hear this, it'll be like two weeks ago. Okay. You launched two okay. weeks ago. But yeah, Yeah. it's fun to like have a new format and I don't know. It's just nice to see all of our our friends who listen to our podcast Cardition at RIP. They come they came along with us and that's so nice. So it's been really fun. And also, I don't have to write as many notes about the Kardashians. And that's really nice. (laughs) Um, If you haven't already, check out that show as well. I did an episode with you and uh, the mystery person who we're about to introduce. Uh, But you know what? They've already downloaded the episode. They know what's going on. Um, Guys, uh, real quick, before we bring in this amazing guest, a little clubhouse keeping. Remember, we're trying to reach 1,000 five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts. And if we hit our goal, we will record the long, legendary, yet never recorded BCC Jet Ski Special up at Shaver Lake. We are getting closer and closer and closer to this goal. So please don't let up. Send us those five-star reviews. And if you do, we might read one on the air like this one. The one that Marcy is going to do us the honor of reading. Okay. This comes from B Dads with a Z. Hmm. Great paranormal podcast. If you enjoy the spooky and otherworldly, you'll love this podcast. Bryce, Michael, and Riley approach these subjects with a with a, a passion and sense of humor that will get you immediately hooked. Let's get these boys on some jet skis. Yes, let's do it. Hey, um, B-Dads, sorry that I read your typo. No judgment. <laughs> <laughs> B-Dads, check out A Funny Feeling. You'll like that one, too. Um, <laughs> you can also support the show by dropping a one-time or occasional pledge over at buymeacoffee.com or by subscribing to our Patreon, BCC The Other Side, 
where a monthly pledge of $5 will grant you access to three to five bonus episodes every month, plus our entire catalog of 155 exclusive episodes and more fun content. What? are you waiting for join us on the other side at patreon.com slash bigfoot collectors club uh the links to all this stuff you can find and our instagram at bigfoot collectors club and of course our twitter at bigfoot pod okay marcy Mm. let's get into why we're really here Mm. um would you please introduce who we have with us this week it is my pleasure this person has some of the best hair The best nails, the coolest miniatures, and she's also my co-host on L is for Loser, Jessica Jarden. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God, miniatures. Wait, did I I already fuck up the name of your new podcast twice? I thought it was plural. Is it just L is for Loser, one loser? Did I say that? It's L is for losers. It's mo- it's many. It's multiple I, losers. It's all of our losers, yes. Don't worry. But it can be singular. It can be plural. But we know that there's many. Um, hi, guys. Hi. Jess, Thanks. I'm so excited to have you here. I'm so excited to be here. This is the best. This is just a good crew. I was in that zone uh, where I was just listening. Like I was like just listening to the podcast. I was like, oh, I'm on the podcast. I need to be ready. <laughs> um, get it together, Jessica. Do not wake up. I did the little, yeah, I did the little like cheek slap. Like get it together. <laughs> wake up, you- wake up, wake up. She I, put on bright red lipstick. She's ready to go. You gave I'm wearing a, a ball a, gown. You gave yourself a showgirls pep talk in the mirror. Yes. It's now or never. Um, no, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for those compliments. My sweet co-host, Marcy, really pumped me up. Uh, I'm so excited. What an exciting time. So you collect miniatures? I mean, this is called Bigfoot Collectors Club, so we can talk about collectibles as well from time to time. Oh, good. Yes. I would not say I'm in the realm of like a true collector, but uh, yeah, I collected when I was a kid. I didn't have like a dollhouse or anything, but I was really into miniature food and fruits. Um, And I had like a little fruit stand. And I, at the beginning of the pandemic, just was like, it dawned on me that because you used to have to like go to drive to a dollhouse store a miniature store you're like, not to a go collector find those things. you're not a collector but you know where the dollhouse dollhouse <laughs> like store is. that when i was a kid that was like okay. a big an all-day adventure so then i was like wait a minute i bet etsy has changed the game uh and that was almost a mistake because that really just opened a whole pandemic portal and so i yeah i have a shelf i'm looking at hanging on the wall that has miniatures of a lot it's still just a lot of food i have miniature dim sum i have miniature bloody marys i have miniature pies cocktails uh all kinds of stuff um but it's almost always food so i have yeah my little shelf i mean secrets out uh the reason we had to start a patreon is because jess (laughs) has to buy more miniatures and we need the money i truly do need another display shelf so (laughs) that that actually will be a huge help but um yeah they're just sweet and cute and make me happy and uh it's really fun like scrolling through etsy and seeing all the different little world of miniatures and they like send them since it's etsy they send them with like sweet little notes because it's people who make them by hand and the whole thing just is very charming it's do you a charming ever little world do you ever walk past your miniature food and then pick pick like one little item up and hold it up to your lips and go like and pretend i you're should eating it? i wish uh i've i've definitely have had like photo shoots with all of them you know like holding them up and deciding i look cute um they're very sweet <laughs> but yeah, they, they make me hungry, honestly, because they do such a good job of making them like so enticing. But um, yes, I love miniatures so much. And uh, it's it's a good thing I don't have more space in this apartment or I would definitely like cover every surface with them. You know what they should do? If anyone out there on Etsy is listening, they should make scratch and sniff miniature foods. <gasps> Ooh. That's a great idea. It would be, it, I, but I would maybe eat them. So I'd have to be careful. But now, yeah. I thought you were going to say was they should make shelving that is like, have you ever seen the original movie Overboard? 
Uh -huh. You know the shoe system he's installing? <laughs> mm -hmm. No, you don't know mm -hmm. the shoe system mm -hmm. Kurt mm -hmm. Russell's installing. Oh, yeah. guys, everyone knows the shoe system. And it's just like it brings them to the f forefront and then rotates them out to the side. Yes. That's what you need. That is what I need. I mean, I would love to be to have like a palatial estate absolutely filled with miniatures in all sorts of displays and scenarios. Have you ever seen how... um? Barbara Streisand has like in the <gasps> basement of her mansion, she has like a little fake town. She, doesn't she have like a fake like shopping center yeah it's like a sh it's like a little village and like little stores it's insane I it's the mark of like yeah. a lunatic diva but she has like a little indoor village of shops and they're all stocked with different things i mean i don't think anybody you know works there i think it's just for fun but i would do that in a heartbeat michael yuri i think did and maybe tom lank later did uh, a one man show called Buyer Seller about that entire basement. <gasps> oh my like god, a play I would love to see it. it. I know. Oh my god. Well, it's so iconic. It's like it's the most perfect like diva news you could have. Uh so no, I I would love that and maybe I'll have a tiny one. A tiny uh town of shops someday. Someday. There was, there was if a I make it there was a place when I was growing up called Exchange City where you would go to learn how to like write checks and buy goods and services and everybody <laughs> had a job and it was like a little miniature city with like a little it was it was all indoors you know what I mean but it was like a little miniature town with like a bank and like no, a, that's the a plot diner. Of back in the USSR right <laughs> is it really I have never seen that movie like why, why am I only talking about weird 80s movies I've seen okay, Overboard I, I love Overboard <laughs> <laughs> wait was this little um commerce center for children yeah? yes fifth graders okay. yeah yeah Got it. and yes. you would learn to like you would everyone had a job i were i was a newspaper reporter and i got I, I may have told this story. i don't know why i would tell this story on the podcast before but i remember the mayor was this girl and i printed because like the format for the newspaper had like you know, uh, today's news gossip and like stuff like they, they put a gossip <laughs> column in there that I had to fill out. And so like, I wrote like rumor has it our own mayor and has a crush on. So, -and -so. <laughs> and I got, I got called to the mayor's office and she bitched me out for that. It was like, it was like really being a reporter. <laughs> she you were cried. like aiming for, Fully aiming for like, like Daily Mail, TMZ yes. level scoops. Yeah. She cried. Yeah, you made she her was cry. really upset. I felt so bad about it, but I was like, I, I don't know what else gossip to put in here. I did hear a rumor that she likes this guy, or like I think they had kissed. Oh, I may have so even it put was that. True. It was. Yeah, it was true. true. She was really upset, and I I felt awful. Not you know, boy oh boy, did I make a lot of people cry by accident. Um, in <laughs> elementary school and middle school. <laughs> Just uh, so socially I, naive, and still I would to like this to. Day. I would like <laughs> to correct myself. The movie is called The Experts. What the USSR one? Yes, the movie the 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 song that plays in a montage is back in the USSR, but it's got the it stars John Travolta Ooh. Oh. and another guy <laughs> and another guy <laughs> and a John whole Travolta another guy and another oh, guy in. Ari Ari Gross. Oh, that sure. Familiar. <laughs> uh, it's great. It's about this these two guys. I forget how they get there, but they're basically land oh, yeah. themselves in this town that is filled with Russians trying to learn how to become American. Oh, what a concept. That sounds like it could be like an FX series now. Yeah. yeah. Yes, absolutely. Reboot Let's the experts. It. Let's go. Let's Bring back John Travolta's it. character in a cameo. He and has, the other guy. And the other. He's got a great rat tail. You'll love it. Ooh. Wait, I have more questions about this children's commerce center. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to. Fine. We're going to go way off topic on this episode, but that's fine. I'm just fascinated. Was it like a business itself? Like parents came and like they paid to let have their children learn. <laughs> Good question. Or was it, was it like a, just a community function? I'm just very curious about it. Cause I think it sounds really useful and I would have loved to have had something like this. It so. was, it was a place where you would go with your school on a field trip. Got and it. Okay. you basically would spend like a couple weeks ramping up to exchange city where you would like 
learn about check writing and all this stuff and like opening a bank account. And then you would get your jobs and you would kind of have to research what your jobs do. And then like the bus takes you there, you show up and then for a day you're a mini little city. And there's like, wow, that's cool. Yeah, it was fun. It was also kind of a letdown because I had been, my sister's, my sister's like six years older than me. So I had heard about this for like when I was like in preschool or kindergarten and I, dreamt about it all throughout you know so i really built it up i thought it was going to be like (laughs) disneyland and then i got there and i was like okay this is a little underwhelming but you know and then i got yelled at by the mayor (laughs) made (laughs) made the mayor cry well Well, you humiliated her in front of her in front of the guy she liked the most yeah i mean and her reputation was on the line i Mm. mean i gotta side with her but at least you were an honest journalist sharing a true story at least it wasn't made up i would like to say to all the potentially future humiliated women out there don't cry that's the big tell when you cry when someone says you like so and so and you burst into tears (laughs) everyone knows then and there it's true hey man i only (laughs) report the truth okay (laughs) you broke Um, a huge story that was your me too you're ronan farrow (laughs) yes yes i was a little ronan farrow um, and, actually, and actually, as mayor, she was she had too much power over anyone that she was romantically involved with in that city. So uh, yes, I, I was speaking truth to power. Exactly, it was uh, it she was, was you calling out power dynamics yeah, before was, they were ca- known. Yeah, she had to resign at three o'clock that day. It was it was done. <laughs> um, Jess, we yes. like to ask everybody who comes on the show, what if anything is your personal paranormal history? You know. This is this is such a tough one because it's like uh, the same way that I wish I could eat spicy food or that I wasn't a baby about uh, fish and therefore could eat sushi. It's not all food. Uh, I feel like it's a bummer because I want nothing more than to be and to have a bunch of paranormal stories. I want it to be true the same way I love like the Zodiac and everything. I just have never had the good fortune, I guess, of having interactions that have felt like particularly spooky. Mm. Um, so it's like I <laughs> I feel like like a believer who just has not had my like rapture, I guess. Um, but no, I I want very much to believe. I don't think I'm somebody who who believes that it you know, obviously there's like the wide spectrum, right. Of like what falls under paranormal, but everything feels very possible to me. Um, and I, I wish I had had some interactions cause I have so many friends who have our friend Yamara casually oh. talks to ghosts all the time. Yes. And yes. I have to hear about it firsthand. You should have her on, uh, to I'd talk love about to. it. Yeah. Um, it's Jeez. very except it's very like almost blase. Like, oh yeah, yeah, she's like, oh yeah, this dead guy in the my hotel room, which is very annoying. Just it's, like that's how she acts. About yeah, it. it's, it's like, not. It's it's all it's it's uh very small potatoes to her. But that's, um, that's similar to Santina. Uh, I didn't oh, realize really? that Santina like spoke to to the other side. Uh, wow. And um, no. she came on the show and she was like, yeah, well, I did that. But, you know, she's like rushing past all this other like, wait a minute. How many ghosts have you <laughs> yes! spoken to? That's exactly how it was with Yamara. But Just like Yamar's very chill. Trained like Yamara has done readings for yes. me and other friends like she and she, she did past lives like she, yeah, she's, you know. she does. She does some kind of like medium type stuff, some work. Uh, what does she call it? I forget healing space work but um no i've never seen a ghost i don't i don't know that i've ever felt like i've been communicated with um i it's it's a tragedy because i would love to so did to you, all the ghosts and aliens out there come come at me <laughs> oh boy you're in it you're in for it now did you uh like have you ever heard a story or seen like a tv special where you're like you know, like a, an old sightings or unsolved mysteries where you're like, that one really stuck with me. That was a cool UFO story or that was a cool ghost story that a friend told me. Anything like that. Well, you know, I'll tell... I heard one that I... I don't know if I can share. I'm not going to use the names if that's okay. Because it's fine. like, it connects to UCB people and it involves murder, so it's heavy. Is that okay? Yeah. Oh, this is story is this is a this is story is so good. <laughs> I hope it's the one you're thinking of. It's not my story, but I it is the one that I would say like chilled me great to my bones the most. But um, 
someone in the community in the UCB community um, was uh, is from Texas and had grown up in the house that he and his family had moved into, knowing um, that the previous owner there had been a murder there. Um, that it was like you know the parents had been open with the kids and for however they knew that there had been this like really horrible tragedy in the house growing up like in Houston where I think it was a single father and two daughters and um, he had like lost his mind and uh, tried to kill them and killed one and I think committed suicide and it was just like a weird knowledge he had his whole life growing up and grew up like seeing ghosts like seeing like a little like kid running around and sort of was in the way we're talking about with Yamara was like kind of like cool with the whole thing like knew the story it was spooky but it was just part of like growing up in this complicated house that's that cut to like some years ago somewhat recently at UCB this person uh, was a stand up and um, was performing. I mean, and uh, heard like there it was a show going on, like a stand up show going on. And a lady was on stage uh, doing her act and starts talking about growing up in Houston and references like basically exactly where he grew up. No way. I don't even know what the like identifier was, but like said the name of the street or something like that. And because so she after- had heard of the murder house, obviously. Well, okay, okay. Wait, they go. Michael, so after the wait. show, he's he goes up to her and is like, hey, that's so crazy. You're from there. I'm from there. And they start the conversation. And it <gasps> turns out she lived in the same house and they piece together. It's her she is the surviving daughter who no. became happened to become a comedian also was like living in new york and was just out doing a show in la he happened to hear it and like it was face to face with this person whose sister and family had haunted him his whole life growing up as a kid in this house. And they like, I think like truly the blood drained out of them. And I don't even think they like finished having the conversation. Like they were like, it was just too much all of a sudden, you know, like just the world was too uh, cataclysmic in that moment. And that story, like still to the, like it is so the chances are so odd. It's just so weird and specific. And it just is so spooky. So that that could even happen, that all of it was true and that they like pieced it together and that, yeah, these people like cross paths after having that kind of connection. So that's a wow. really sad story, but it's really spooky too. It's yeah. also fascinating. Yes. And can you imagine just hear, it was like he heard it in passing from the side stage and was like, oh, weird. That's so specifically like my street or whatever it was. Uh, and then- it happened it was just so much happenstance you know and then that's it that's the girl that's the survivor oh. seems like they should have gotten married though right i know it should have been love or <laughs> teamed up to fight crime one of the two yeah. and then and then get married <laughs> to go back to that house and like right that wrong or whatever needed to happen uh but yeah i just is so so spooky so that's a story that's not mine, but that definitely like rings in my head of just being like, it all feels very possible and real. Wow. Wowie. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah, that's, that's truly wild. Marcy, you'd heard this as well, obviously. Yes, I've heard it. Um, and you know, I was going to ask even before this, like, so I have some theories about why some people, you know, maybe are more prone to having paranormal experiences and I think Jess was actually raised in the environment that would cause the opposite because your yeah. <laughs> your parents your your father's a scientist. That's probably a very I've never put that together. That is probably so the heart of it is that I was raised with zero religion. Neither of my parents brought any real. They were relig- like from religious families, but we were ra- raised with zero, zero, zero religion to a point that I know nothing and I'm stupid about religion. And then my dad is a full on scientist with this PhD in chemistry. 
um, and my mom's a professor. And so they're just like, yeah, they're just a, we're just a real facts based family. Uh, and definitely Ghosts are not. facts. Ghosts are <laughs> facts. Yes. I agree. I agree. But you know yeah, the, I imagine that there was just not a lot of room for, for it. Look, your dad may not have ghost stories, but when I saw him over the weekend, he said fruit in his Scottish <laughs> accent. And I was like, just, oh, it just tickled me. Pink fruit. Uh, what is it he's... with your family and fruit? Oh, no, he just, <laughs> it was just the how he was because he's his accent is he's Scottish. His yes. accent's not very strong. No, but he offered us like some, you know, if you want anything to drink, it's some frit. And it really <laughs> came out with frit. And I was like, oh, God, this is charming. This is great. <laughs> he yeah, I guess we are drawn to fruit and offering fruit and <laughs> adoring fruit. It was, a hot, fruit. We it was a hot day. It was a hot day. But no, he's a yeah, he is a. A, a softened uh glasgow accent from being here like 40 years but yeah I, so i don't hear it at all anymore but i like that it is still there it's very cute Amazing. but yeah he's just a sweet scientist man who's probably not talking or thinking about ghosts ever so i never got the chance but someday maybe i wonder what that's like <laughs> yeah well <laughs> I mean, I do. I mean, when I say that, that that's why I think that maybe she hasn't had her own experience. I do think that there is something about being open to it and maybe even curious about it that makes it more likely that it's going to happen. Um, yeah. Probably the same thing with everything. Like, you know, it's all courtship. Yes, I think it is. It's a, yeah, it's, it's like an, it's awareness, right? Like you have that sensitivity or sensory, uh, awareness and uh, yeah, I just don't know that I have, I have it. I yeah. You it. just may not have the right. It also, I think sometimes people just have a radio tuner in yeah. their head. That's really strong, whether they're into it or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they're just like, Oh shit. Why is this happening to me? Cause you do hear stories especially in the alien abduction world of like people being like, I never gave two shits or thought twice about flying saucers. And then I got abducted by aliens and I yeah. truly don't know how to wrap my brain around this. <laughs> no. That's genetic yeah. runs in the bloodline. That's right. See Marcy gets it. Um, I get it. Both of you guys are big into reality TV. I know this from keeping up or what, uh, what is it? Wait, not keeping we were it. Cardition it. Cardition and now it. We're we're losers. Yes, yes, yes. No, I just can never remember what the name. It's keeping up with the Kardashians, right? It's That's, dead. It doesn't matter. We're moving okay, forward. Got it, 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 got it. <laughs> So I know that like recently there was news that I think Chloe was really into UFOs and going out and looking for UFOs. Uh -huh. Well, this is not even new. Chloe right. has been okay. on the paranormal <clears throat> tip since the very first. You mm -hmm. know, back Big in the believer. day. Yeah, their old, old episodes uh, with Caitlin, when Caitlin was still their stepfather, uh, taking an RV out to Roswell, New Mexico with the kids, accidentally like going on to like places they shouldn't have, the, like high security. Um, she's been on Tyler, uh, oh, Henry, yeah. the Hollywood Medium. She and Kylie both. So, like, the little kids and Chloe, not the little kids, Kylie and Kendall. <laughs> no I like little. calling them the little kids. The I little like billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, they're very much. I think the whole family kind of leans towards believing because their father died tragically. Oh, there's a lot of ghost stuff with yeah. uh, Robert Sr., for sure. <laughs> Robert Kardashian Sr. haunts the family constantly. Yes. Have they we seen would... his ghost in the house? Do they talk about that on the show? Because I think this would surprise a lot of people who don't watch this stuff, that this actually it's comes less up. like they see him and more that well particularly like kim is very vocal about like flashes of light or like certain times of day and like signs and symbols a lot yes. more than like oh there he is um unless you count the hologram of course that kanye had made for her which is wait not what ghost, but he made oh, a hologram no. of her dad oh my god yes he made for her 40th birthday last year. She took this very scandalous trip to a private island 
with like 40 yes, of her I best remember friends when this happened something. mostly because you were getting <laughs> mad about it on your instagram <sighs> just like, we were like, not pleased it was like in september when things were like we're not going to private islands guys or maybe it, it was, was august it was yeah. just like peak misery for every other living person and it was just poor timing on so, the whole i missed the part where you guys talked about them having a hologram oh so, well so what happened was Kanye wasn't there for most of the trip or any of it or most of he it. He came, I think, for a, a teeny bit at the <clears> end. But 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 for the hologram, he wasn't there. He wasn't there. And he had created a hologram to talk to Kimber- Kimberly to tell her how proud he was. But first, to talk about how great Kanye is. <laughs> Kanye's a genius. And then to make a comment about farting. <laughs> so weird it was like truly do yourself a favor and watch it because it will make your brain explode it's insane it's like truly he because he i I don't you know he worked with some company that can you know that took real audio uh because they they also were a big video camera family so there is a lot of audio of robert senior um and he so it's really his voice and you know his likeness uh talking directly to kim and yeah there's just a lot of kind of getting a little sidetracked in terms of Kanye being really a genius and the best. <laughs> and, uh, this is like what like, happens when you have Tony Stark money. Yes. yes. And like, it's so, it's so crazy because when you watch it, it's so odd and unemotional, but they are like sobbing watching uh-huh. it. And of course it's like literally her dad talking to her mm. in, you know, if you believe it and feel it, it's like a, oh, so overwhelming for them. But it's a real goof. But the thing you might be thinking of, Chris, is that on this last season, they, um, they, there was a whole storyline with uh, Chloe and Tristan, like legit, keep like camping out to try to see some flying saucers. And then when they were in Malibu, Chloe did see something in the sky, and she was like, "Oh no!" And Tristan was asleep, so she was like, "I saw something. I saw something in Malibu over the ocean." Yes. Yes. So it was it was like a very fun little uh, foray into into that world. But they're definitely believers. Oh, for sure. Also, now, Jess, you might have called Michael. I know. Chris I know. I know. Because I caught Chris, myself. Chris Jenner. It's not I had Chris Jenner in the brain and yes. I immediately <laughs> was like, don't call it out. It's wrong. I just wanted. To, I know people are hearing. They they know it. But no, I know him. I'm sorry. It's because of Chris Jenner. Because you're such a boss, like she is. Well, um, and I I've had this kind of brain all week. When we were recording the other day, I mixed up like 20 names. Uh, it's just I'm having that sort of a week. But look, no, I know. It's fine. I, I literally all I could think about for the last two minutes is where the hologram is now. Is it like in the top shelf of a of a walk-in closet? <laughs> Like, what do they do? Do they turn it off and think just stash it someplace? It's, it's, I don't, you think it's turned on? <laughs> I don't know. I I don't have Kanye money. I don't know how holograms work. I'm picturing like I, something out of like Star Wars where they have like a little pedestal and they can turn it on and off and he appears. You know, it's <laughs> called a hologram, but I really feel like it was more just like a projector kind yeah. of thing. It, it, I it, feel it, like it. it was like a projector. Yeah. More just sort of, yeah, kind of a little show. <laughs> we got a lot of people writing into us about the, the Chloe stuff in Mount, the UFO searching, which is why. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys about it. And then there were people who were like, get her on the show. I don't know. Do you think she'd ever be on Bigfoot Collectors Club? She's Michael. She is single right now. And if you don't go <laughs> look, if you don't try to take Kim and Chloe on a date with yes, you, go. As a throuple, get that. Be make them be sister wives for you. Do I it. Mean, my, do it. My mind's still reeling from that hot goss you dropped on the episode for episode one of Ella's for Losers about Brad and, that- and Kim. Isn't that just the most fun? I I felt like high off of it for days. Yeah. Now, it is <laughs> totally like now. unsubstantiated other than like hearing it from a friend who heard it from a publicist sort of thing. But I guess I shouldn't reveal po- uh, Patreon secrets well, on no, here. But, but guys, that's just the, no, it's good. That's the kind of stuff you're going to get over yes. at L. Yes. for Losers at Patreon.com slash L is for Losers. Mar- Marcy, I remember last time and we're going to we have to move on to a break soonish. But I remember last time, one of the last times you were on the show, it might have been over on the Patreon. We got into because because Riley 
and Grace are big Real Housewives watchers. And and Real Housewives somehow comes up on the Patreon a lot and or frequently for a, for a paranormal podcast. And I think you were talking about how the woman who the show medium that Patricia Arquette Allison was on. Allison Dubois. She An destroyed a dinner party of <laughs> the Real Housewives. Yes. It's called Dinner Party from Hell. <laughs> this is this is uh, like a level of housewives uh lore like this is so high up on the list of must see uh, episodes it's really historic it's great I because it's got watch some, some clips just... today and i need to see the uh, whole thing now uh, it's, it's a joy it's so good because it it kind of is just like a lot of but personal drama mm-hmm. and t- to see what happens when a medium m- gets in the mix Mm. With some housewives, a mean medium, the it's meanest, the meanest woman, drunk, <laughs> drunken mean medium. So, uh, did you ever watch a DMM? Medium? I I didn't. I mean, I, sometimes I'd be occasionally like flip channels back when you used to do that, and would stop and watch for a little bit. But no, I was not like a. I, I didn't stand the medium. Well, yeah, an interesting same. thing about it that I didn't put together until watching Allison in the flesh um, on television uh, was that so she drinks a lot and on the show she would drink to not see ghosts oh but she drinking was a part of the show it wasn't like she was never like an alcoholic but they definitely had her drinking to like push it down interesting and i was like oh this is because the writer's like she's a fucking drunk yeah i (laughs) felt like they were not hiding that in the housewives episode Uh, (laughs) well no in fact they say don't they say that one of them says that like she's gonna come to this party and when she drinks the spirits really start talking yeah 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 and that's it's fully like the setup for the whole thing and then my god the amount of shots they have of her of like sipping those big bowls oh god it's so fun it's oh, so, it's good. so good. Does it's she start so calling good. out their dead relatives in front of everybody so <sighs> even better <laughs> their so, dead emotional relationships <laughs> the the backstory is that camille grammar uh and also at this time i don't think everyone knows maybe they do that Camille's husband, Kelsey grammar is cheating on her. Right. So, uh, soon to leave her yes. for the woman he was cheating on her with, Very... who I think he is now married. Yes. Uh, he got her pregnant. I believe she was a flight attendant. Um, yeah. so there's a fight between Camille and Kyle Richards, um, who is Paris Hilton's aunt. Um, so they already aren't getting along. And so it's, very clear the in in the they say in the episode camille goes i haven't told allison anything and it's so clear Uh, that she has told allison the targets on that woman (laughs) (laughs) that's her go after her and she's she's this is pre this is early years before vaping was cool she's vaping I'd never seen one before. I like for years after didn't. And it was like the craziest thing you've ever seen. It was like an electronic cigarette entered the scene and everyone's like, what the hell is that lady doing? And she is just drunkenly vaping and her eyes are just so busy. Her eyes are just narrowing, rolling her eyes. She's having the best time. Is she good? Is she a good medium? Sorry, Marcy. Well, you know, it's a great question, Michael, because she does start telling because they are they're kind of like, well, tell us something. Is anyone here? Like they're doing that annoying thing. Pushing, pushing. Yes. And she starts giving sort of mini readings. First, she's like, oh, I'm off the clock. I'm off the clock. Like avoiding, 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 which only makes them want more. Right. And, and then. then- and then she like says something to Lisa Vanderpump and Lisa Vanderpump's like, that's not true. That's everyone who knows me knows that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> but then she turns it to Kyle and she says to Kyle, um, uh, I see there being a second husband. Have you been married before? And Kyle's like, yes, I've been married before. She's like, oh, good. <laughs> I guess this is going to be your last marriage. So that's great. But he will never fulfill you. Know that. 
<laughs> know that she says it twice oh, he says, will never emotionally yes. fulfill you know, know that, that. Mm -hmm. and it is like a bomb goes off at the table like and they're she, like Whoa, and she what had other threats like she's like life is so crippling sometimes it's nice to just be in control of your annihilation control of your annihilation and I she just, keeps saying at the top like it's a girl's night right we're supposed to behave badly right <laughs> like she is wild and she like just seems less like someone who talks to ghosts and just wants to come in and shake shit up i she, agree with her <laughs> with her red hair and the fake vaping smoke around her she looks like the female incarnation of a de the devil like she just looks uh, so fully evil it's and, just, like such joy <laughs> It's so amazing. In fact, I think that's why, like, if she is a great medium, this really discredits her a lot because she yes. just looks like the meanest woman in the world. <laughs> uh, well, and that's why it's great because Taylor is like, well, who is she talking to on the other side that knows about her husband's, <laughs> Kyle's husband's emotional life? Like, yes. who's who over there knows that? And it's like, her powers are not clearly outlined. And yeah. so I think the women especially are like, wait what do you do what are you seeing what are you feeling uh it's she amazing does, she says this thing like um they're all here but i tell them to take a back seat so i can focus on you ladies but she wow. clearly hates them and is like going out of her way to make them all feel like shit and <sighs> it's incredible it's incredible there's also a very famous exchange um one of kyle's best friends is um faye resnick oh. who was um the best friend of I saw Nicole this part. Simpson. Yes. And so the line. So this is the weird like Kardashian overlap here. So yes, this is where it gets very thorny, weird. Um, and, juice, you know, kind of kind of kind of <laughs> she forever tarnished her reputation largely because she put out a book uh, two months after her best friend's death, where she like just talked about like secrets of her life and her sex life. Um, and yeah, and then posed for Playboy at some point after that, just really rode the wave of that, of her best friend's murder, um, which I think is fair to not, um, I think it's fair to frown upon, but Camille really like, uh, is, is just plays her like, kind of like a fiddle, like, I don't know you. Why do I know you? And then is like, oh, I know from Playboy. She was in Playboy. That's right. Which is very funny because Camille was in Playboy. So she does it to shame her. But then Camille's and like, I only had like a little part on the inside. I wasn't on the cover. Like, yes. It's like, it's like, it's like, doesn't, it's not a good uh, point of attack for Camille. But then in her confessional, she calls her the morally corrupt uh, Faye Resnick. And Whoa. you better believe that's stuck around. Oh, it's never. Every time I think of Faye Resnick, I think the morally corrupt Faye Resnick. Talk about a perfect burn. It just sounds good. You just want to say it. By the way, these are all people I tried to get from a UCB show and podcast, Holly Weird. I tried to get Faye Resnick. <laughs> I tried to get Allison Dubois, who wrote me back, but lives in another state. Uh, because any the this is like the, my favorite, one of my favorite things in the world. Are there any other paranormal moments oh. that have happened on reality tv that like stick out in your mind you're like okay every this, season like, does anyone ever to... like did the does shaws of sunset ever catch a ghost on camera <laughs> oh currently shaws of sunset um is vacationing in a haunted cabin a norcal like i mean oh, not go. currently in real life but currently on the show so yes but also like when i started like thinking about it there's every so season many. they go like twice like some of the funny <clears throat> oh the oh this is a fun one just do you remember back in the day when vicky gunvalson was dating brooks ayers who mm -hmm. famously said his favorite part of her was her vagina uh, <laughs> and faked cancer <laughs> yeah so this is what it's about though so he at the time had cancer and for some reason tamra has a lunch with uh megan king edwards and heather dubrow and then a psychic and the psychic says, I just don't, I don't see cancer. And they're like, is she, is he faking it? And he's like, I don't know if he's faking it, but I don't. And this is like, I'm sure they had inside information somewhere else, but this is like what planted the bomb of Brooks is faking cancer and Vicky <laughs> fighting for years about it. It turns out, yes, he was faking cancer. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Um, <laughs> Then, uh, oh, oh my gosh. And then, Jess, do you remember when... This is my favorite starting of a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> on Roni, back in the day, they went to Morocco 
Uh-huh. And bought a monkey's at, paw. Uh, oh, I, I, I wish. So they're at this party that this you know guys throwing it that's belly dancers it's like that he mm-hmm. has a fortune teller there as entertainment and the fortune teller is speaking in french luckily uh, <laughs> oh, who, who, who possibly could help well luan and <laughs> and kelly ben simone um, oh yes they both are speaking french so they all have readings and ramona sits down and kelly is doing the translation and kelly goes <gasps> Because right after the the psychic, I mean, the fortune teller had just said ultra femme. And they, they go, oh, another woman, another woman, another woman. <laughs> Everyone, and Ramona's like looking around like, what? Huh? 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 They, so the psychic said that her husband was basically having an affair with another woman. And she's like, oh, the other woman's probably my daughter. That's probably the other woman. Yes. And then, oh, yes, yes, yes. It did yeah. come out later that it was actually uh, an, an affair that he was having. Many affairs probably. I would have. say largely that's what these tend to si- sort of circle around is instead yeah. of it actually veering into like real paranormal like like just to jump back in the in the Allison Dubois Beverly Hills uh, Dinner from Hell like uh lisa vanderpump wants to talk to her dead uh grandma like yes. that's what she's trying she's trying to like <laughs> steer it and it's like i would love to talk to my dead grandma she means so much to me and she gets like fully shut down by allison dubois who then just wants to dive into like your husband doesn't will never fulfill you so it's like even the, they they tend to just steer towards yeah. like uh affairs but i can tell <laughs> if in you're that- <laughs> on, I was sorry, just gonna Marcy. say in in the Moroccan episode though it everyone is so scandalized and I, I think they start the women start crying so it definitely doesn't yes. feel like someone set it up they're like oh my god they're like they're they're all sobbing and Ramona's like it's okay it's okay it's okay uh, so <laughs> it's it's like one of the best. Uh, well, I feel like you can just, if you're a psychic, you walk into a uh, Beverly Hills mansion, you can, someone's cheating on somebody yes. in that house and you just need to just, that's, that's a really easy go to. Well, thank they you also, for sharing some. Oh yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, I think that the most important bridge between a lot of these women and the paranormal world is, a, is actually like that they don't want to go to like therapists or real doctors and they yes. have a lot of money. So they go to like, like Sonia <laughs> on New York on Roni, like gets told by a psychic, by a um, psychic. that she should go to therapy. <laughs> and then what does she do? She goes... So instead, she books. I uh, see you on a chaise lounge. There's <laughs> someone there listening. She, like, she it's so help. she's like, you should get out. But she's like, oh yes, I'm really working myself. She's like, no, but I mean an actual doctor. But the next thing Sonia does is go to her healer, uh, Alita St. James, who's been her healer for years. <laughs> and it's so funny because they're talking about her father, and Sonia's like, huh. I mean, I knew I had daddy issues. I just didn't know it was my father. <laughs> Meanwhile, this woman is like banging a little gong <laughs> above her head, <laughs> like like shaking little shakers around her and, feet. And so you goes, <laughs> "Ow, ow! Oh, that's a buzz. That's a that buzz hurts." Ooh, I re- I just released something from my ankle. <laughs> Like they'll do anything to participate, but not have to go seek like actual uh, trained medical help, uh, which helps. Michael, I'm sure I told you that last season on Real House uh, Housewives of Dallas, they went Bigfoot hunting. Oh, yeah. I have to watch that episode. I forgot you told me that. Guys, it sounds like we all need to be watching a lot more reality TV. That's that's we're here for you. Or just listen to our podcast where we'll we'll recap it all for you. Plug. Fantastic. I I I really did not know there was this much paranormal stuff in these shows. So that's- at least twice a season, there is a visit to a psychic. Yeah. Did they find Bigfoot? Wouldn't it be great if the Real Housewives ended up like Bryce is out there filming a show? Wouldn't it be great if Real Housewives were the ones that found Bigfoot? Okay, if you had to choose between five drunk, kind of hot, rich ladies or Bryce, who yeah. would you pick? <laughs> Oh, I, you don't want to uh, say five drunk ladies. <laughs> you don't want to say the whole time. Sorry, Bryce. Five drunk ladies. All the way. All right. Yes. We, we got to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to play bullshit or believe it with Jess Jardine, and then this week's story of high strangeness. And we're back with a uh, special guest co-host Marcy Jaro and her co-host from Ellis for Losers, the wonderful Jess Jardine. Uh, you guys should hear some of your favorite paranormal moments from reality television but now uh jess 
we got to get into some of your belief system here. So this is a game that we like to play with all of our guests. I'm going to go down a list of phenomena. If you're open to it, you're going to say, believe it. If you're not open to it, you're going to say, bullshit. You have one or the other. There's no in between. So use inflection if you're not sure. Okay? Okay. Okay. This is a game that we like to call bullshit or believe it. Jess Chardine. Mm -hmm. On your mark. Get set. Ghosts. Believe it. UFOs. Believe it. Bigfoot. Bullshit. ESP. Believe it. Shadow people. Uh, bullshit. Unicorns. Bullshit. Alien abductions. Believe it. Yeti. Bullshit. Mothman. Bullshit. Out of body experiences. Believe it. Tarot cards. Believe it. <sighs> Demonically possessed dolls. Bullshit. The healing power of crystals. Bullshit. An alien spacecraft crashed at Roswell. Bullshit. Loch Ness Monster. Bullshit. Atlantis. Bullshit. Haunted houses. Believe it. Skunk ape. <laughs> Well, you bullshit, just unlocked bullshit. a secret game within a game, so get ready. It's the ah! first time I've had to do this. Okay, here we go. Not, I mean, Bryce is usually the one that does the secret game, so we'll see how I do. The Jersey okay. Devil. Um, uh, believe it. The Biblical Devil. Bullshit. Speaking to the Dead. Uh, bullshit. Mermaids. Oh, bullshit. The government is hiding the truth about Sasquatch. Mm, bullshit. Past lives. Uh, believe it. Life on other planets. Believe it. Life after death. Uh, bullshit. Whoa, Jessica Jardine. <laughs> bullshit Wait, or believe it. How can you believe in ghosts at all if you don't believe in life after death? Good question. <laughs> or past lives. Get into it. Yeah. Also, life I'm after death. Yamara. Resurrection is life after death. <laughs> I'm telling you, Mara, you don't believe in speaking to ghosts. I don't. <laughs> How can you not believe in Mothman, but believe in the Jersey Devil? Uh, that one I fumbled. Okay. Or okay. not the actual devil. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this is a pressure situation. Wait. Okay. My palms are dripping with sweat. Not also, everything is going to make perfect sense. I'm sorry. Uh, Michael, you don't normally burn rate your listeners for their <laughs> <laughs> answers right uh, our listeners I, or our guests i'm Some... not listening your guests your no guests. it's fine yeah. in this situation i think we're among no. friends it's all fine that's but listen that's a fair inconsistency to call out the ghost one <laughs> <laughs> i acknowledge <laughs> i guess um, i believe i guess when i hear life after death I don't hear it as ghosts for some reason. I didn't yeah, think you're of thinking it as of ghosts. like the heavenly realm or something. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking, yeah, I think that I but separate Where do you those. think ghosts go? Or where do you think like when your friends are talking to people on the other side? It is yeah. they're, they're do, on another <laughs> Yeah. Do you think only people who really love wow. their house get to stick around <laughs> and that everyone else is just like a poof gone for good? I guess I just haven't really had to articulate like the strata <laughs> as I see it. But I guess, yeah, I because I really like I'm at a crossroads because I can't explain it. I believe in ghosts, but I also believe once you're dead, you're in the dirt. <laughs> She's a walking know. contradiction. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there were ghosts up to a point and then we had we were all full up and um now we're done so they're just floating around at capacity i don't know i'll work out my system of belief <laughs> okay. okay you know what nobody actually knows the full truth it's true so it's fine to not it's fine to kind of bounce around there should be no permanence in the in most beliefs yeah There's, okay Jess. i believe something yes i'm getting excited i'm chomping at the bit here i apologize oh, i'm getting gosh. revved up here because you unlocked okay. a secret game within a game uh, oh, by not knowing what Skunk Ape was, <laughs> I now have to play a game with you called 60 Seconds to Sell Skunk Ape. I'm going to pitch to you what Skunk Ape is, uh -huh. and, and, and I have 60 minutes to make you believe in Skunk Ape. Okay? 60 minutes? Get 60, 60 seconds. This, 60 this minutes. Be long. We already had that episode. Okay, here we go. Usually this is Bryce's job. Riley's so filled in gonna... before... 
I've you're never pitching done it. it to me, and I'm. It, the question is if I'm going to buy it at the end. Yes, exactly. Okay. 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 Uh, okay. I, I usually do this to Bryce, but I'm doing it to myself. I'm putting this on the clock. On your mark. Okay. Get set. Sell Skunk Ape. Okay. So basically, Skunk Ape is Florida's Bigfoot. Now I know you said Bigfoot's bullshit, but let me just put this little piece of kernel in your little kernel in your mind. What okay. if Bigfoot's not some like jolly mythical creature? It's actually some sort of endangered species, relic hominid. So there's like maybe seventy five of them out there that are surviving deep within the woods, sort of like them. How the mountain gorilla hadn't really been discovered until the late eighteen mm. hundreds, early nineteen hundreds. Okay, they're highly mm-hmm. intelligent. They avoid people. They can live in the deep, deep, deep in the woods, and they know how to stay away from folks. Okay. Okay, so just think about mm-hmm. that in the back of your mind. The skunk mm-hmm. ape, Google Mayaka skunk ape right now, M Y A K K A skunk ape. You're going to see a couple images that an old woman went out in her backyard, saw this thing eating apples and <coughs> eating plums, called the cops, said, Did somebody lose an orangutan? There's this thing in the oh. woods. There's a thing in my backyard. She was worried it was going to like attack her pets. She snapped two pictures. You can see the beast moving its head in one from one to the other, and that's it. I'm out of I'm out of time. I'm out of time. <laughs> that's Skunk Ape. There's a photo of him right there. He looks like a yeti, or like he looks like Bigfoot. Yes, right? yes, he's Florida's Bigfoot. I see. Okay, okay. Wow. You know what? This is just, just be, don't just be nice. <laughs> I mean, I definitely don't think he's real, but I'm having fun <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> so do you buy skunk ape? No, I'm sorry. Damn. I don't. I know. Listen, I'm going to tell I God, wish that I could. would have been so good if I had won that. You have no clue. The clout I would have had. It's it's not you. It's this scientist blood in me. It's not even, you know, my dad's from Scotland. Like we said, we took a trip to uh, Loch Ness where sure. you like and it's so by the way, everyone should go. It's so fun. It's the cutest little town. And you like go out on a boat over, and they tell you the story of Loch Ness. And it's like every, it is so like all you want to do is believe it. But that also that water is very scary. It's like shiny, sparkly black. It's very spooky. Now, um, but, but look yeah. at the eyes shine on this thing. Look at the way it tilts its head in the next picture and opens its okay. mouth. You can see when, those teeth. <laughs> when you told, <laughs> told her to Google that, I Googled it and just did like Google image search. search and uh, I would like you to both look at your text message I just sent you because this is one of the fellows who came up in my search. Oh, <laughs> I am not touching that. <laughs> he, he's got thick thighs and he is spooked by someone. Oh, I didn't know you were in here is what it oh, seems like he said. excuse me. <laughs> uh, I mean, look, I... I'm like I'm saying if we're just I want I want this to be true I want this to be true Great. you know it's like that weird wasn't there that like insane creature that like washed up on the shore in like Long Island like Montauk monster Montauk the Montauk monster well, I'm gonna look yes that. yes 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 that was like the whole basis of Stranger Things was based on that legend the Montauk oh. monster that there was could... a creature off the shores of Lock you know that there was like a, a black site you know, uh, doing experiments on yeah. Long Island. Oh, I never knew yeah. that. In Very... fact, Stranger <laughs> Things working title was Montauk. <gasps> well, this is heavily covered in Gawker at the time. I remember yeah. being just like riveted by this Montauk monster, which may actually be a bloated raccoon carcass. Yes. Yeah. I think oh, it's just interesting. It's just a drowned raccoon. All right. We gotta get into the <laughs> this week's story of high strangeness now knowing that i had you two on and it is wet hot alien summer two summer abduction i thought (laughs) i gotta combine both of these things into something that's gonna really play on their expertise um so that being said let's get into tonight's story marcy Mm. are you ready on standby to play some characters in this thing absolutely great all right not too long ago We reported on a BCC news item that singer Demi Lovato had recently gotten into the practice of trying to summon UFOs with famed ufologist and conspiracy theorist Dr. Stephen Greer. Here she is talking about this experience with Kesha on Instagram. (laughs) I'm going to play this audio for you right now. Hopefully you can hear it. Oh, that's very funny. Big thing that happened was we saw this really, really bright light. First of all, this blue orb 
kept. Oh my god, beautiful. <laughs> Look, it kept floating in front of us. <laughs> She's showing pictures of a blue light. 20, 20, 30 feet away. And then when I would try to walk up to it, it would just hop another 20, 30 feet back. So I could never chase it or get to it. But I, I was trying. And at one point in the night, I literally said, meet me in my dreams. Let's, let's hang out in my dreams. We're calling it on the contact session tonight, but you're welcome to come hang out in my dreams. And Dr. Greer calls this blue orb kindness because they had an experience with this same blue orb in the desert where it actually healed somebody's hearing loss. And so oh they God. named it uh -oh. kindness, this ET. Uh -huh. And so um, another, there was, I don't know if you can see this, but there's these like two lights like two that, blue yeah that was caught on camera that just showed up in some of the pictures um is that i think the that same is thing as whoa that's insane yeah and and that <laughs> i watched float in front of my friend mod he, he was sitting there and, and it floated like right in front of his sleeve and i was just like i looked at <laughs> dr greer and i was like do you see that he was like yeah i was like that's wild so that was Demi, Demi Lovato sharing her experience of a blue orb named Kindness, Kindness that she summoned with Dr. Greer as Kesha reacted to it. I will put this uh, link in the show notes so you guys can watch it at home. Pretty. Ah! Oh, pretty. Wow. Wild. Now, Demi Lovato and Kesha aren't nearly the first celebrities or singers to get into UFOs. As longtime listeners of BCC are aware, Tom DeLonge from Blink-182 began mm -hmm. to the Stars Academy to further study UFOs in the private sector and was one of the forces behind the breaking of the Pentagon UFO program, a tip that was revealed in the New York Times back in 2017, along with some now, uh, now well-known and legendary UFO footage. I thought it would be fun if we took a look at some of the other celebrities who have relationships with aliens or UFOs in a little expose I put together simply called Celebrity UFO Sightings. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I think I know some. I'm excited. Ooh, okay, great. Um, and if I miss any, then, then fill us in. All okay. right, well, this first one I think you guys are going to really like. Um, famed sitcom actor Fran Drescher claimed oh. she was abducted by aliens as a teenager while driving in the car with her father. It's an experience she claims par paralleled that of her ex-husband, Peter Mark Jacobson. She told uh, a reporter this. You know, it's funny because Pete and I both saw aliens before we knew each other doing the same thing, driving on the roads with our dads. We were both in junior high. A few years later, we met and we realized that we had the same experience. <laughs> and I think somehow we were programmed to meet. We both have this scar. It's the exact scar on the exact same spot. Her ex-husband Jacobson shared his doubts. Great job, by the way, Marcy. Saying yeah. really bad. <laughs> that she got the scar from a childhood accident with a drill. But Drescher knows the real truth. Mm -mm, no, I said to him, that's what the aliens programmed us to think. But really, that's where the chip is. Now, Fran yeah. Drescher is the only sitcom actor on this list. And the rest of these people are, are mostly pop and rock stars. Like mm. this one, very well known, very contemporary. I maybe not as contemporary as uh, still contemporary, maybe I don't know. But Miley Cyrus mm -hmm. and a friend were driving through San Bernardino. Now, Jess, is this one of the ones that you knew about? No. Okay, great. You're just confirming that she's still contemporary, and I'm not. I, I'm, I'm like I'm like a dad now without kids. I don't know what's <laughs> popular anymore. She, she and a friend were driving through San Bernardino when suddenly they looked up and saw what Cyrus described as a flying snowplow <laughs> chasing down their car. Uh, I'm pretty sure about what I saw, but yeah. I also bought wa weed wax from a guy in the van in front of a taco shop, so it could have been the weed wax. <laughs> but Cyrus and her friend weren't the only witnesses. Other cars on the road were pulling over and watching the UFO as it cruised overhead. Cyrus mm. claims she could see an alien being riding in the front near a glowing yellow plow. 
it looked at me and it made eye contact. <laughs> what really shook me, like looking into the eyes of something that I couldn't quite wrap my head around. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Smiley. <laughs> I, I, I practiced. It's really good. <laughs> Probably the least surprising celebrity to have witnessed <laughs> UFOs is the one who many consider to be an extraterrestrial himself, David <laughs> fucking Bowie. Yes. Yeah. Z- Ziggy Stardust grew up fascinated by UFOs. Allegedly, he saw them so many times as a kid, he quote unquote got used to them. There are even <laughs> stories of him standing on the roof of his working class home looking for UFOs, to which an onlooker shouted, can you get BCC too? <laughs> and obviously, a number of his songs are inspired by the concept of alien life. In 1975, uh. Bowie spoke to Bruno Stein in Cream Magazine and had this to say about his encounters with UFOs. I used to work for two guys who put out a UFO magazine in England about six years ago, and... I made sightings six, seven times a night for about a year when I was in the observatory. We had regular cruises that came over. We knew the 615 was coming in and we would meet up with another one. And they would be stationary for about a half hour. And then after verifying they'd been doing that day, they'd shoot off. There's another instance where the adult Bowie commented about seeing a glowing UFO over a field that he felt was a projection of my own mind trying to make sense of this quantum topological doorway into dimensions beyond our own. (laughs) But the alien life he was most interested in, according to Bowie in a 1997 interview with MTV, was not quite the concept in a literal sense. When asked about what he thought about the growing interest in aliens and alien abductions, Bowie said this. Ha, huh, I feel like a traitor, but I'm sort of indifferent to it. I'm not madly obsessed about the thing in terms of hardware, sci- science fiction hardware. I've just tended to use the idea of the alien or the otherness of beings as to pinpoint a sense of isolation or alienation, which is slightly more of a psychological thing. They became ciphers for that. More. <laughs> but the idea is, here's the life on Mars. <laughs> I could care less. <laughs> Bowie isn't the only rock and roll legend who claimed to see UFOs. During his, thank you, during his infamous Lost Weekend in New York City in 1975, former Beatle John Lennon saw UFOs while in the presence of his and Yoko's assistant, May Peng. During a sober moment in a weekend bender, John was compelled to the window and saw a UFO hovering over a building across the way. I was lying naked on my bed when I had this urge, so I went to the window, just dreaming about my uh, dreaming around in my usual poetic frame of mind. <laughs> there, as I turned my head, hovering over the next building, with no more than a hundred feet away, was this thing with ordinary electric <laughs> light bulbs flashing on and off round the bottom, one non-blinking red light on top. Lennon called <sighs> Peng over to the balcony, where she, too, witnessed the craft. As I walked out into the terrace, my eye caught this large circular object coming towards us. It was shaped like a flattened cone, and on top was a large, brilliant red light, not pulsating as on any of the aircraft we'd we'd see heading for a landing at Newark Airport. When it came a little closer, we could make out a row of, or circle of white lights that ran around the entire rim of the craft. These were also flashing on and off. There were so many of these lights that it was dazzling to the mind. The two tried taking pictures of the event with their Polaroid cameras, but nothing turned up in the images. But Lennon (laughs) insisted the event took place, even noting it down in the booklet of the Walls and Bridges album artwork. On the 23rd August 1974 at 9 o'clock, I saw a UFO. (laughs) He wrote and then signed the statement with his initials. And who else had a connection to UFOs? Well, none other than the king of rock himself, Elvis. Bryce, if you're listening, I'm sorry you missed this bit, buddy. 
Elvis, Elvis's UFO connection occurred on the night he was born, January 8th, 1935. During the in-home delivery of baby Elvis, his father walked out to have a cigarette and looked up into the skies and saw a strange blue light hovering over their shack, a sign that he took to mean that something special was happening that night. Now, according to Elvis's longtime hairstylist and friend, Larry Geller, Elvis told him that as an eight-year-old boy, he was telepathically contacted by two alien beings who showed him a vision of a man performing in a white suit in front of cheering crowds. At the time, young Elvis had no idea that this was a vision of his own future. Larry Geller was even with Elvis one time as they were driving through the desert and saw lights in the night sky speeding so quickly they knew it, they could not be airplanes. Now, this next individual isn't a celebrity on the level of Elvis, but he did have an experience that's one of my favorite stories of extraterrestrial contact. Author comic book writer, and magic practitioner Grant Morrison, the mind behind The Invisibles, Happy, and Batman Arkham Asylum, among many, many more, was in Kathmandu when he was visited by celestial beings. After seeing a BBC documentary retracing the steps of the Buddha, Morrison and a good friend traveled to Kathmandu where they visited Swayambhutna, the temple of the self-created one. Legend says that if an individual were able to climb all 365 steps of the temple in one breath, they would be guaranteed enlightenment in this lifetime. So Morrison and his friend took a deep breath and jogged up the stairs. Two nights later in his hotel room, Morrison was working away on a script when suddenly a strange sensation flooded the room. Now, Morrison admits that he had smoked a wee bit of hashish earlier that day on the <laughs> roof of the hotel, but not enough to fully explain what happened next. He looked up, and according to Morrison, silver balls began to emerge from the walls. They basically said to Morrison, okay, you've done it now. Where do you want to go? And Morrison responded, Alpha Centauri? Immediately, Morrison was transported out of his body and shot through space-time where he was given a 350-dimensional view of a planetary system with three suns. Describing the entire experience as being peeled off in the third dimension, the alien intelligence then transported Grant Morrison to a cathedral-like gigantic vaulted space that he calls infinite but confined he's a uh, scottish by the way and it's a very thick accent and in honor of your father i'm not going to attempt it <laughs> oh come on all right i'll try okay. it, i'll try it, i'll try 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 <laughs> the silver ball showed up showed morrison an aerial view of all space time from the big bang to the end of our universe and was instructed that they stay with me guys the silver blobs were growing universes in time like vegetables in a garden box because the dimension they were in was outside of time, endless and eternal, the only way to grow their quote-unquote children was to create time and plant the seeds of a universe within it so it could age and grow. From this perspective, Morrison could see that the first single-celled organism that first split on planet Earth millions and millions of years ago was continuing to multiply and, all, and that since then, all life origin and since that and since all life originated from that cell, all life on Earth is really one living being spread across time. That being was feeding, consuming its environment, like a chao like chaotically, like like a caterpillar on a leaf, and like a caterpillar, it would eventually evolve into a different being. I, actually, I should wind up and say it's not consuming everything chaotically. It's in its nature to consume everything. So the globs were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. All this stuff going on with the, the environment and all this stuff, it's part of the process. It's part of like the way a, ca a caterpillar eats the leaf. Yeah. This single-celled organism that split up and lives throughout all of time, it's basically saying we're all one. We're consuming our environment the way that a bug feeds off of a leaf, okay? I mean, uh -huh. listen, we should still, you know, recycle and everything. But 
<laughs> so Morrison said about the experience, here we go. I felt like I just woke up more real than anything. Oof, not great. He likened yes, our reality. It's it's, he likened our reality to a, he likened our reality to a low res 1950s TV image when compared to the ultra HD version of the endless cathedral of the silver blobs. It's all one thing. They told them if he could wrap his mind around what he'd seen, the beings encouraged Morrison to go back and tell as much as he could about the experience. This incident profoundly impacted Morrison's life and future work, basically becoming the basis for his occult, his occult series, the invisibles and even turned up in superhero comics like all-star Superman. Morrison spent the next few years chasing the experience with psychedelics, DMT and other drugs but was never able to recreate what he perceived as this shamanic alien abduction like experience. And he said mm. that like going into this, he was like, he was like, he never touched a drug. He never touched, uh, touched alcohol until he was 32. He was like super straight edge kind of punk guy. Mm. And then like, he started toying around a little bit, but he was like, I literally, he was like, I had like one hit off a hash pipe and that was like hours before this happened. He's like, but I have to admit I was on drugs when this took place. <laughs> He's like, but not, he was like, nothing like this has ever happened. You know, since, he was just being since. Miley. He was just being Miley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, next time you're pursue, uh, perusing us weekly or Perez us Hilton. Weekly. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're right. I know it's Us Weekly. I know it's Us Weekly. I just wasn't realizing what I was doing. Chris, reading. get with the program. <laughs> yeah, come on, Chris. Next time you're perusing Us Weekly or Prez Helton, I really hate when people do that, or listening to L is for Losers latest yes. updates on the reemergence of Benefer, remember yes. this episode of BCC and understand that when it comes to UFOs and aliens, celebrities really are just like us. Oh, uh, perfect. This is perfect, Michael. Bravo. Bravo. What good performances. <sighs> very uh, good. Very good. Oh, uh, gorgeous. Gorgeous. Well, what do you think, Jess? Jessica Jardine, what the hell is that? <laughs> what are these celebrities seeing? I mean, I, it's real. You know, they're stars. They're close to the planets. They they have a special access. Sounds like blue orbs are very common, I'm hearing. Yeah, that kindness entity shows yeah, up a couple it sounds times. Like kindness is really floating around, uh, even though it sounded very playful with uh, Demi. Mm -hmm. I love it. The only one I had heard of that or knew of other than that was um, Dan Aykroyd, right? And oh, he's, yes. He's a big crystal skull guy and hence yes. the, the baka. Yes, um, we've 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 talked about him on the show before, so I kind of left him out of this yes, one. But yeah, I figured, yeah, yeah, I figured as much. I um, mean, I've already gone on and on about Shirley MacLaine, so we don't yes. need to do that. Yes, um, Marcy did Shirley MacLaine already, but I mean, there's you know, there's like Sammy. There's one that I saw that was like Sammy Hagar was like, yeah, man, I was like dreaming, and these two aliens like came down and like talked to me. And I know it was a dream, but it was real. <laughs> like I was like, <laughs> I might leave this one out. But it, I'm surprised like it, you know, it really was like mostly I guess I'm not surprised. It's mostly like pop and rock stars who are having this yeah. stuff. But uh, yeah, friend Drescher, she was like really seriously believed she was abducted by aliens. I mean, but do not forget that Anne Heche said that she was an alien. I, I know. I thought about that one. She called herself it's... Celestia, but it turned out to be like <laughs> a bit of a bipolar really... episode. Yeah, yeah. I think it yeah, was yeah, like yeah. a real manic episode, and I didn't, you know, I didn't want to. Celestia is so yeah. fun, though. Google uh... Anne Heche and Celestia. It's a good story. I just, I don't know. I was like, maybe. Did she maybe not, not tell it on this. Oprah? I feel she, as if she told it on Oprah. Am I great? No, she she wrote it in a book and then talked about the book on Oprah. Got it. Never mind. Yes, yes. Oh, I think wow. it was like him. She, I'm, like, I'm going to read God. this later. Yes. Oh, yeah. Check out Anne Haitian Celestia. It is. I just felt it was also maybe a little sad, so I didn't. I didn't want to. No, that makes sense. It, it. It's so interesting because it's like you know, as much as these uh, like interactions and experiences can happen to the common man or woman, it's also does make sense that like. 
people who are living bizarre lives surrounded by yes men and on getting to having no barriers about like what drugs they do or what like psychotropic experiences they have it's like yeah that checks out that that would be a, a sect of the population that's well, probably pretty open yeah and basically like rock stars are living like a constant magic ritual i mean they're getting on yeah. stage they're they're bri- they're transcending like social norms right and yeah. left they're sort of rising up and becoming gods in their own right like gods in yeah. like the fashionable you know sort of like you know gods walking them on i am a golden god yeah Yeah. i'm a golden god kind of stuff yeah so i could see this could influence some of this stuff now not alien or ufo but i just remembered uh so do you remember the show the ghost whisperer with jennifer love hewitt yes oh yeah so that's based on this medium i just read her book it's called when ghosts when ghosts speak and in the book she talks about going to jennifer love hewitt's house and that there was a ghost in jennifer love hewitt's house who was like some basically like a stalker and he watched her in jennifer in in love's shower he would like peep at her and that she was like i think you know this guy and then jennifer love hewitt called her mom and found out that like a guy from her hometown had died and like it was the guy that that the medium described she's like oh it's a pervert from my hometown who's Ew. watching me shower that's no fair he got a pass he died and then he got to go peep on her i mean i think he got really chastised by the medium though she's like good Get out of here you pervert he's like i'm surprised <laughs> that's not more commonly part of it just I'm like sure straight pervin you oh, know absolutely it is so much like cupboards and <laughs> kitchenware flying as opposed to just like peeping on titties. Well, they got to be quiet when they're looking at them bitties. <laughs> <laughs> Although that is one of that's my probably my favorite part of Ghostbusters when he uh, speaking of Acker is no, it's not Acker. It's um, Bill Murray. Bill Murray gets the or no, it, it's it Ac- is. It's Acker who gets the ghost yeah. job. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like a full eyes cross. <laughs> yeah. Real like confusing moment for me as like a five year old kid. I was like, yes. what is happening here? Huh? I don't understand. Huh? I think I get it. But and I... Kesha had sex with a ghost. <clears throat> oh, oh did she? Right. I believe so. Oh, Amazing. Bless her. Bless don't her. Stop. Giving, those... <laughs> mm-hmm. giving those reactions uh, to Demi was just oh. precious. What a clip. <laughs> Marcy, you're my lead maybe yeah, the real high, high that's, point that of this. really was the that's they were the, all beautiful performances my great morrison was not great but that's okay. well no, no the the but the bowie the lennon those were beautiful performances but just on like a gut visceral what is i'm gonna hear in my head for days is that miley i love oh her my God. so much <laughs> there was a moment where i was like i know marcy's gonna nail this one <laughs> <laughs> Just you couldn't even tell the difference. Now with May Pang, I don't know who she is. So I actually That's have fine. a funny side story of her very quickly, Great, which is that um, May Pang, May Pang, and okay. Yoko. This is an interesting thing. So my husband Tim has a podcast about cocktails. We're all in the biz, right? Don't don't shout it out. Don't even say it. No. I won't even say it. No don't go sloppy li- boys. Don't go listen to it. <laughs> um, but no, they they do. They pick a cocktail every week, and so and they talk about the history of it. And so they did Brandy Alexander's a while back, and found this very funny night of like you know there's there was Lennon's like last year, which was obviously. Uh, longer and he was out here in LA just fucking around and very drunk and um but he he wanted to come out and Yoko was like not excited at the idea of him she didn't want to come to LA so she allowed the um that assistant my may uh it was like hand picked by her to basically be his like partner in LA like she, he was allowed to fool around with her her surrogate uh, oh. yes so it's like basically picked a surrogate for John to have out during his like carousing LA time of which there's lots of stories there's that I think are all like pretty pretty dumb where it's like he started a drinking club with um Alice Cooper and like some other guys called the vampires of Hollywood. And so they would drink at the rainbow, which is still in existence. It's a, we're rock and rollers have gone to drink forever. And they had a little like VIP room, but on one night he got absolutely hammered on, um, Brandy Alexander's and there's photos of this. It's a very funny photo series. They went to the troubadour 
I'm blanking on who they were seeing, but they, it was him and Harry Nielsen and they got hammered uh, on Brandy Alexander's. And you can see these like where they come in funny cups, you know, cause they're kind of like hot toddy cups and there. And then there's these photos of Lennon and my like hammered making out in the car, like paparazzi shots. Whoa. <laughs> I'm like leaving. I'll find them for you inside. I'm, I'm like leaving the troubadour absolutely um, hammered. And it was like a scandal kind of, but it wasn't because Yoko had allowed it. So yes, that's the story of that assistant. Um, yeah. She was also allowed to have this like last weekend with him while like he and Yoko were on a break while this was yeah, it was basically on. like a thing, just an arrangement of like, yeah, go fuck around. Um, but it's a very funny little photo series of them, like absolutely all hammered, leaving the troubadour. Just a fun side story that came up. I love it. And we'll hear more stories like that every week on L is for Losers. Yeah. Uh, ladies, Marcy, first of all, thank you so much for filling in uh, for Bryce's Shoes. You did an amazing job. Uh, My uh, pleasure. J- Jessica Jardine, really thank you for being here. Uh, what a wonderful guest. Thank uh, ladies, you. we we don't know where to find John Lennon's spirit uh, or these aliens, but where can they find both of your works? Mm. I mm. mean, go check out L is for Losers on Patreon. Uh, you can go check out Instagram, JJJLA. That's Jess's oh! Instagram. Go see her miniatures. You'll find them. You'll find them. Uh, mine is Marcy Lane. And then I have two other podcasts, A Funny Feeling uh, with Betsy Sidara. We t- the, uh, the sister, po- you guys know it. Don't, don't act like that. Uh, and then, uh, uh blah 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 nicole buyer and i have 90 day bay also on patreon sorry jess i didn't mean to do your work for you are you you. kidding i i mean kicking my feet up over here just relaxing while my friend (laughs) rolls right through all the plugs no you nailed it perfect what a pal great that's all right well uh (laughs) we love you guys uh come back anytime uh you know there have been requests to do like one of these episodes of Real Housewives as part of the Bigfoot TV club over on the Patreon. Maybe we'll do that sometime. Maybe Ooh. we'll find out. Uh, Bryce, Riley, we missed you, but don't worry, guys. They'll be back next week. Until then, good night and go get regressed. That's my Bryce voice. <laughs> Wait, let's do that again, um, Marcy, <laughs> and be Miley and say, go get regressed as Miley. <laughs> Until next week, good night and go get (laughs) regrets. No, no, that's true. That's true.